The questions I'm exploring in the work are things like what happens after you die? What could quantum physics tell us about life and death and how that could be non-binary? More cosmic than we can imagine. Thinking about the complexities of grief and how our minds try to process things that are incomprehensible to us. My name is Libby Heaney. I'm an artist based at Somerset House Studios. I had quite an unusual route into art. I first started out as a quantum physicist, so I completed a PhD, and I then went back to art school at Central St. Martins. And now I make work with advanced technologies like quantum computing, machine learning, and combining those with physical works like sculpture and watercolour painting. It's really nice. It's going to be then really impactful, I think. And this is lovely. This is foam and then memory foam on top. Yeah. And uh, it's satin and velvet, so very, very flexible. Been the resident of Somerset House Studios um, for seven years now. My practice has obviously changed a lot in that time. Initially, I was working with artificial intelligence and chatbots. The way I work with quantum computing isn't kind of how scientists want to work with it, you know, to make certain programs faster and faster and faster. I'm really looking to reveal the non binary nature of reality, kind of how the quantum world might look when we're not you know, if we were able to observe it. Quantum physics is a description of uh, primarily microscopic reality, so atoms, molecules, photons, which are particles of light, how they interact, how they exchange energy. And when you go to the microscopic world, things get really, really strange. If you think of digital computers, they're all based on Newtonian physics. So you have bits in a computer, your zeros and ones are all encoded using transistors, either being in a low voltage or a high voltage. So you can imagine information really having this physical basis. So quantum computers are where you take quantum laws of physics and you process information using the quantum laws. And what this means is that you can process information in parallel so lots of different calculations are going on at once inside a quantum computer instead of sequentially, step by step, like in digital computers. And this means that future quantum computers will be able to solve problems that no digital computer, even if it's the size of the Earth, ever could. Quantum entanglement for me is exciting because you can kind of understand how systems are connected in a really deep way. So understanding quantum physics through quantum computing can give us a new way of understanding reality and the world. I work with IBM's cloud-based quantum computers. Um, some of them are publicly available so anyone can access them. Others you have to kind of negotiate permissions. <laughs> as soon as they were available in 2019, I started to experiment using data from um, quantum entanglement. So I was writing code to create quantum entanglement inside the quantum computer. This is my PC where I do all my computer-based work. Um, I've got in front of me here some code that I wrote, which isn't particularly interesting to look at, but what this code does is take this data from quantum entanglement and creates essentially this video. So there's 32 different videos all playing at once. And depending on the relation between the different um, entanglements, different videos kind of rise to the top and then decay. Heartbreak and Magic is a work that touches on my experience of grief and sudden loss around losing my sister suddenly in 2019. So the work is deeply emotional, but it's also quite magical as well, how I sought to find comfort in ideas from quantum physics after she died, trying to think about how she could still exist in another realm or in another material form, but elsewhere. 
VR uh, felt like the best medium for the work because it really allows me to change reality in magical and unusual ways. For instance, um, objects can morph and spread out in space and time and the viewer can um, occupy a different body or experience things in ways that you couldn't in the physical world. VR and virtual reality and immersive technologies are often made in game engines, so they're very much about world building and that kind of um, bringing a multiplicity of different craft and um, ideas and um, practitioners together. So of course Libby's had an amazing team of collaborators on this project. And I think when some of the inherent qualities around virtual reality that sort of map on well to what Libby wanted to do is that sense of sort of presence and immersion um, you know it, we call it telepresent being present in another world another space without being physically located there. From a performance point of view uh, VR is quite demanding on the hardware uh, because we've got to need a really high frame rate and the headsets that we're using have a lot of pixels and you're know, rendering everything twice, once, once for each eye. So uh, VR is always quite demanding technically. Early on in the process, as Libby and I were doing some experiments, uh, we sort of decided that this was an opportunity to perhaps step away from something photo real, make it a little more stylized. Uh, Libby was already doing these watercolors, so I set about trying to recreate shader that felt like Libby's watercolors that had the sort of bleed and the fluidity. So I started working with watercolours actually at, right at the same time as I started working with quantum computing and that was because I, I wanted to process an image using quantum computing to kind of remix it and explore how the quantum effects would affect the image visually and I was like what image am I going to work with? I was like well water is kind of like a quantum particle, it floods the page and watercolour spreads out. So I started painting then. So I used scans of the watercolour painting um, as a sort of source material to then act, work with the quantum computer. So the two of them in my practice have really gone hand in hand. And since then, that was 2019, since then I've really like gone hard in watercolour painting generally. Um, these ones here are called five slimy orifices straddling 32 dimensions, brackets, self-portrait. And the drawings kind of create these boundaries, artificial boundaries on the page. And then I start flooding the page with water. I create puddles and I'm pushing different colours into those puddles. These puddles, which are like little petri dishes, um, very magical, they overflow and connect or entangle with puddles on the page. And it just really reminds me of kind of working with a material that is like a quantum particle. It's not, but it reminds me of one because of the way it spreads out and interferes and entangles and blurs together. Drawings and paintings really informed the virtual reality work. So before I started anything digital, I'd made perhaps 20 sort of um, illustrated drawings with watercolour painting and bits of text, thinking about the movement practice that I did with Naomi Anand, who is a yoga teacher and a movement practitioner. And I asked her to kind of um, do some sessions with me to explore the concept of entanglement. So we were working with a soft Pilates ball, massaging it into our tummies, into our backs. We also worked with other parts of the body, but it was really my belly that resonated. After the session, I'd be super in a meditative state and I'd go home and start making these spontaneous drawings. People may be unfamiliar with some of the technologies that are being used. They may not necessarily know a lot about quantum computing or with virtual reality, but I think the point of this work is it's been made by, it's artist-led, it's been led by Libby, and the, the themes in it are very universal themes around grief and loss and memory, but also how we imagine ourselves in the world, how we imagine, how we connect with other people, how we envisage that. And so I think that people will naturally connect with that um, on a very kind of personal level. I'm really excited to see what that response will be like. I try not to fix the meaning too much because I kind of like the idea of an open work with multiple meanings, because I think that's very quantum as well. Also, I'd like to invite audiences to think about the radical potential of quantum physics, about how reality 
at its most basic is queer, it is non-binary, it is shape-shifting without kind of fixed hierarchies. And all of this Newtonian world that we live in is kind of an illusion. It's kind of just an image of this other thing that's deeper. And I think this is really important because so often in society there's like polarization or rigid categorizations that aren't really meaningful or, or true in the sense that they could be plural and more dynamic.